Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is part 23 of the Tafsir book Pondering over the Quran, Tadabburul Quran by Amin Islahi. We continue to read in the explanation of Surah Al Baqarah, verses 30 to 39, thematic continuity. The descendants of Ishmael are invited to respond to the message of Islam and worship Allah alone. An account of the creation of Adam and his vicegerency, an account of the creation of Adam and his vicegerency on earth, and how Satan opposed this divine scheme, is given in these 10 verses, verses 30 to 39. The story of Adam and Iblis teaches us many lessons, which will be explained in the following pages at their proper place. We may we may, however, as an introductory remark, point out its overall coherence in the context of the preceding discourse. This story incidentally also reflects the reaction of various groups to the advent of the Prophet of Islam and the revelation of the Quran. Sincere people who were free of any feelings of pride or jealousy but had some doubts about Islam and the Prophet as a result of a deficient understanding of the message, embraced Islam as the truth became clearer and their doubts were removed. The attitude of this group to Islam, the attitude of this group to Islam in terms of the Quranic story is similar to that of the angels to the announcement by Allah about the creation of the vicegerent on earth. Initially, the angels had some doubts about the new vicegerent, and they expressed their, and they expressed these before Allah. But when the whole scheme was explained to them, they were fully satisfied with the vicegerency of Adam. The reaction, or rather the objection of Satan or Iblis, on the other hand, as the Quran shows, emanated from his arrogance and envy. Iblis believed that he was better and superior to Adam, for he was created out of fire while Adam was from clay, so he could not bring himself to prostrate before a lowly creature like Adam. Satan, Satan considered himself superior to Adam and far better qualified for the vicegerency that was bestowed upon a human. The hostility of Iblis was reflected in the opposition to Islam from those who were motivated in the opposition to Islam from those who were motivated by feelings of envy and racial pride. This anticipated encounter was played out again with the advent of Islam and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Those who were sensible and reasonable welcomed Islam and its messenger. Once their doubts and misunderstandings were removed and others like them who had not yet done so were soon to take the same path. On the other hand, the hostility of a section of the contemporaneous Jews was based on envy and arrogance. They considered themselves superior to the descendants of Ishmael because of their lineage. They were the erstwhile religious leaders and occupied a pre-eminent position as compared to illiterate Arabs, the descendants of Ishmael. As such, they were far from amenable to accepting an unlettered prophet from among the Ishmaelites and thereby giving recognition to the leadership of the illiterate Arabs. It was hard for them to renounce their claims to racial superiority and relinquish the religious and moral leadership of the world that they had enjoined, that they had enjoined and relinquish the religious and moral leadership of the world that they had enjoyed until that time in favor of the illiterate Arabs. The opposition and hostility of Iblis could not stand in the way of Adam's destined role. Similarly, 
no matter how vehemently the enemies might oppose Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his message was bound to prevail ultimately. There is nothing wrong if a person is assailed by some doubts about a proposition or some aspects are or some aspects are unclear to him and he seeks clarification. A case in point is the angels in this story whose genuine concerns were all answered. Good and sensible people may genuinely feel uneasy when they are not satisfied. And they may at times raise certain questions. Since, however, they were since, however, they are not moved by any feelings of arrogance or envy, the moment their doubts are dispelled and they realize the truth, they embrace it without any mental reservations. This is in a way subtle this is in a way a subtle hint and an invitation to respond to the message to those who, though not believers yet, were free of negative feelings of pride or envy. They had, they had not yet entered the fold of faith since some aspects of the message were not fully clear to them and they had not realized the true import of the message. With this textual backdrop, let us study the following verses. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جاعل في الأرض خليفة قالوا أتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون Verse 30, and when your sustainer said to the angels, I am going to place a vicegerent on earth, they said, will you place on it one who will spread corruption in it and shed blood while we celebrate your praise and extol your holiness? He said, I know that which you know not. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَقَالْ فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَاءِ هَؤُلَاءِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Verse 30 And he taught Adam all the names then he, And he taught Adam all the names then showed them to the angels saying, tell me the names of these, if what you say is true. قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ They said, glory be to you. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. Surely you are the all-knowing, the all-wise. Verse 32. قَالَ يَا آدَمُ أَنْبِئْهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ فَلَمَّا أَنْبَأَهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ قَالَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكُمْ قال ألم أقول لكم إني أعلم غيب السماوات والأرض وأعلم ما تبدون وما كنتم تكتمون. He said, O oh Adam, inform them of their names. And when he had told them their names, he said, Did I not tell you that I know the unseen of the heavens and the earth, and I know what you reveal? and what you conceal. Verse 33. And when he said to the angels, prostrate yourselves before Adam, they all prostrated except Iblis. He refused and was proud and became one of the 
disbelievers. Verse 34. وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ اسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةِ وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةَ فَتَكُونَا مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ And we said, O Adam, dwell you and your wife in the garden and eat freely from it anywhere you may wish. And eat freely from it anywhere you may wish, but do not come near this tree, lest you both become wrongdoers. فَأَزَلَّهُمَ الشَّيْطَانُ عَنْهَا فَأَخْرَجَهُمَا مِمَّا كَانَا فِيهِ وَقُلْنَا اهْبِطُوا بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوْ وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرٌ وَمَتَاعٌ إِلَى حِينٍ But Satan lured them both away from it, i.e. paradise. And caused them to be ousted out of the happy state they had been in. We said, go you all down, you shall be enemies of one another. And on earth you shall have your abode and your livelihood for a while. Verse 36. Then Adam received from his sustainer certain words of prayer, and his sustainer accepted his repentance. Indeed, he is the one who accepts Repentance, the ever merciful. قل نهبطوا منها جميعا فإما يأتي أنكم مني هدى فمن تبع هدى فمن تبع هدى فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. We said, go down all of you from here. And if there comes to you a guidance from me, then anyone who follows my guidance shall have, no, shall have no fear. Then anyone who follows my guidance shall have no fear, nor shall they grieve. Verse 38. But those who disbelieve and deny our signs, they shall be the inmates of the fire wherein they will dwell forever. Verse 39. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.